Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Because um, uh, Mac and, and and Chap told me the story that I didn't know, which is when you first started out, you were calling games on the local radio station. <laughs> And you had no way of knowing what was going on in Civic Stadium. So you would say stuff that was going on and then make it happen at the stadium after the fact, like fights and things like that. Is that true? This is great. We have a lot to talk about. (laughs) Absolutely true. Uh, There's a name for that. We would open up a watch line. Let's say that you were playing a game in Bellingham and then uh, you were relaying the game back to uh, Portland on radio. Uh, I was the color man, Uh, purely imitating anybody that ever said had no idea how to be a color man but having a lot of fun. And uh, what you would do is, you would open up this Watts line. We were in Portland, games being played in Bellingham, but we're presenting it as if we are the sports announcers there, as if we've got the money. <laughs> to go uh, on the road. To, to go <laughs> cover the game. So we would, I had a little, bo- I, I, actually Cliff, I don't remember his last name, but Cliff, the guy was, he was, he was a really accomplished guy in, in sports announcing. And he basically gave me a quick, here's how it works. But you had a, you had a little, brown wooden box and a couple of different weighted pencils for different sounding foul balls. <laughs> and what we do is we'd open the watch line about five minutes before the game. Now a watch line is just basically t- today would be, I don't know, it, it's just an open line. And you would wait for the information to come from some guy. He would either walk up to the t- telephone and say, or just run through the inning and tell you, tell you what happened. Uh, Daniel's grounded out, uh, so-and-so popped up, Curtis uh, hit a home run, and then blah, blah. So you just made it up completely. And, and I'm going to tell you one story is that one time we got, but you sometimes would get behind and you'd be, you'd be waiting for the information to come and you got, you've nothing, you got nothing to say. And well, we'll go to commercial. <laughs> After a while, you got to start talking. And one time... The information didn't come, didn't come, didn't come, and I just had to start making stuff up. And here we go. I have no idea what the score is going to be by the time we come back. And my roommate at the time was a great guy named Kurt Daniels, Deke Daniels. We had been fighting each other for a job in, uh, in Bend the first year we played. Great guy. And I decided the only thing that could drag this out long enough was to get Kurt Daniels in a fight with a guy I knew at another club. And it was the greatest, grandest hell of a fight. The bench emptied. We were calling everybody out what was going on. And finally, we got the information. And we, should say, and we finally said, well, the umpires have got control of this thing. And they're back on the mound. And here's the first pitch. <laughs> it's like boom, 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 and get into it. But you were literally making it up, making these foul ball sounds, you know. You know, and and and, uh, and talking with each other as you were sitting in I don't know we were in some booth in some restaurant. It was crazy, crazy time. Was, but that was that's true. You made it up. There's a reason that yeah. There's a reason that scenes in, in Bull Durham when the guy is doing that. Yeah, Bull Durham by the way is about hmm, probably 30, 40 percent of my life. That's another story. That's a, well, actually well documented. But uh, yeah, that one that one's there. But now, but that's what that's what they did then too. 